You good? Everybody speed? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Paul Pod. This is our final guest for the season, Paul Pod for Curtain Call 2. I have the distinct displeasure of welcoming Eminem, ladies and gentlemen. Eat a dick, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I can see how this is going to go. This is going to be fun. We've talked to several people throughout your career and leading up to the music that was sourced for your project, Curtain Call 2. And it included people like Royce the Five Nine, Skylar Gray, Adam Blackstone, as well as James Larris. And now we are here talking to yourself. And we just want to go over some of the stuff that helped create this masterpiece of hits that we are debuting with the world. So I guess we can start back where we left off from Curtain Call 1, right? Which okay. is the greatest hits compilation. You'd finished putting out Encore. You put out Curtain Call. Which had Fack on it. Probably my best yes. song ever. Yes. Fack yeah. was a masterpiece. But, but at we, the time, you didn't think yeah. so. Remember, you thought that At the that time, shit was I ridiculous. thought it was ridiculous. but And I still think it's ridiculous. But now I, I appreciate its ridiculousness. Best song I ever made. Yeah. It not clearly, even close. It's not even close. Not, nothing is close. No. Lose Yourself can, can Go Fuck Itself. Like we can change the title. Huh? Fuck yourself instead of lose yourself. Anyway, you ah you you put out the greatest hits album. The the two new songs on there were Fac and When I'm Gone. When I'm Gone, right? Which is one of the saddest, most depressing songs you've ever recorded. And that is so, in the company of Fac. Yes. We we've we've established that. It makes it even Fac. more emotional. Oh yeah, yeah. Clearly. Seri very serious yeah. song. So you go away for a while after that. You had been dealing with, obviously, your, your addiction and recovery. And some time goes by. And you start to record and make music again. So the first project that we get to hear from you post-recovery. Is and, an album with, the, with a bunch of fucking accents on it. Was, was, well, we're going to get to that. So, so you, were, you were sober and you made an album called Relapse, which is sort of ironic, right? But mm -hmm. I guess it was sort of a, a, a ironic way to say you were relapsing into making music again as opposed to, to drugs. So what can you remember? I know you're going to talk about the accents, but what can you remember about that process and how you arrived in that creative place back well, then? I remember like when I first got sober and all the shit was out of my system. I remember just being like really happy and you know, everything was like fucking new to me again. Right. So it was the, it was the first album and the first time that I had had fun recording in a long time. So during this fun, something happened and something like completely morphed into like a lot of my songs have always been like that. Like you joke around with friends and shit and then, you might put some of that shit in a song. Yeah. But I don't know, man. It was like the first time I started having fun with music again. And 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 like relearning how to rap. You remember that whole process <laughs> was really yeah. took a long time for my brain it to did. start working again. Yeah. I mean, you you literally were coming off of, you know, an, an overdose and, you know, they had to sort of stabilize you with a few medications and some of them took you a minute to adjust to. Let's mm -hmm. just leave it at that. Right. So you're learning how to rap again, almost literally. Right. Because it's the first time probably you were creating without having substances in your body in in however many years. Right. Yeah. So it's a whole different experience. Did, didn't you ask the doctors when I started recording new shit, when I first started rapping again and sent it to you? Didn't you say like, you see, I just want to make I sure he doesn't have brain damage? Yeah, I, I I thought you might I thought you might have some permanent problems. Yeah, I was concerned for sure. Detroit uh, basketball. You know, some of that stuff, you know, that you recorded back then was it was like you know nobody was pushing you and you were just finding your way and doing it slowly. But you know, yeah, like a record that leaked out that Detroit basketball record, it wasn't good. 
Yeah, bro, that shit was like that was. I think that was the first thing I actually wrote. Yeah, uh, literally, I think that was the first song. Right, and it was so, fucking weird because like as my brain was turning back on, I <laughs> I started going over lines like, wait, is that that's not good? And I do if you remember, I don't know which version leaked, but if you remember, there was like twenty versions of that shit. Yeah, you kept going back to it. And, and listen, you were you were figuring it out. But, you know, it didn't take long after that time period started that you all of a sudden were like really back in it. It was quick. It, it was it was certainly concerning, but we're only talking about course of maybe five or six months total. Right? I don't know if you remember this, but the first recording session we did when we were serious about recording the album, we went to Florida, right? Yeah. And you remember I was itching constantly. Like my fucking skin was crawling. And what I didn't realize at the time was that was the barbiturates coming completely out of my system. So I was so still, still withdrawing. I was still, yeah, to, with, with it to an extent. Yeah. I mean, I was taking fucking 75, 80 Valium a night. Yeah, I don't know how you survived that. I don't well, either. I, you but, almost didn't. That's 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 yeah. the truth. So you're down there, you're you're itching, right? Yeah. And you're still itching making and recording. And recording. And what do you remember what the first records were that you recorded for Relapse that ended up making the album? Ganja, I know, was one. Right. Was it Ganja? So Dre was down there in Orlando and you were working with Dre. Yeah. And you did you did Ganja. I think you did my mom. Yeah, he right? was like feeding me beats, and I think Ganja was first, and then maybe my mom was second. Yeah, and at some point you record, you know, a, an important record um, for the album because it sort of framed the creative, and you record 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. What what was going through your mind? And I know we're about to get into the accents, so tell me tell me what you were thinking when you recorded that. Well, okay, a couple things come into play. One, I had just started, like, I started watching a bunch of, like, fucking serial killer documentaries and shit. Right, because there's a fucking lot of them out there. Yeah, and it's like it started giving me ideas. Like, I could, if I tried to sound like a demented fucking serial killer, and if you remember this too, Beautiful came out of earlier sessions when I was still fucked up. It was probably the yeah. only decent song I had made during that time. Right. It and was I didn't want to put it on the, the album. I didn't want to put it on the album because it didn't fit the concept of everything else and the accents right. and all that shit. I remember that. The accents, they built up. Like, they started just getting thicker and thicker. And I don't even know what yeah. what fucking accent, accents they are. It's like fucking Irish, well, German. It's I, interesting to me because I, I didn't really notice it. And I was just <clears> so excited that you were making music and having a good time with it. And the fact that we were going to be able to put a project together that it just sort of was going on and I didn't think about it. Yeah. Right. And I don't, I don't know why, but it just, I don't think I was the only one. Yeah. At the end, I went to play some music for some people and they were like, yeah, he's, he's rapping really well again, but like, what's up with the accents? <laughs> and, I was Bro. Like, and I was like, what do you, wait, what do you mean? And they're like, you don't hear that. He's like talking funny. And they were talking about like 3 AM. And I was like, Oh, well, that's, he's just like, you know, bending his voice. And what I had always thought was that you were using the accents to bend words. Well, that too. To make, to make them fit together, yep. right? Because if you say a word a certain way, it's going to connect with another word that it might not otherwise connect with. Mm -hmm. That's what my I assumed. You remember, I don't know if you remember this, but in Florida, I don't know if you remember how fast I was writing. Like, it was fucking crazy. Yeah, it was flying out of you. Pause. I, I do I do remember that. And and in particular, I remember the record Underground. That was one of my favorites because you were just spitting like you were back at the hip hop shop. It was like it was sick. And I was I was so happy that you weren't brain damaged and right. permanently disabled from rapping like that again. When I listen to it now, it's still like it gives me chills listening to Underground. So I got really excited you're recording everything's rolling you're recording some stuff with accents we don't realize it's going on you make 3 a.m you come up with the serial killer vibe and we use that to sort of market the record and as the the catalyst for the creative 
um, surrounding the marketing campaign, the video for 3 a.m., which I'm sure you remember. We spoke to James about it, and he just remembered how shitty the weather was and that you got into that bathtub full of blood and we couldn't heat it up quick enough. Do you remember that? It was cold, right? Oh, so cold. Yeah. Yeah. But you were, you were bold. And then I reminded him that like you, you're someone who's never like been shy to do your own stunts. Going back to the role model video, you yourself were hung upside down in that water chamber. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was fun. Fun time. You don't think, why didn't we think to get a double for that? Like it didn't need to be you. Right. Well, can we go back and redo it? Yeah, let's redo it. Yeah, get Phil and Dre on the phone and we'll just redo the fucking thing. Yeah. So so relapse relapse comes up comes out of that that whole process. It's born of that time where you were relapsing back into the game and you had a certain feeling about it afterwards, right? Yeah. Tell us what because you I'm sure most people listening to this know how you feel about the album, but tell us what, what your thoughts were after you released it. After relapse? Yeah. I remember we was we was in Hawaii, I think. And at some point I was listening to maybe something from the Eminem show or some shit. I uh-huh. remember listening to some of my older shit and going, why don't my shit like it don't feel like anything right now? So okay. when we did that, the first recording session we did for recovery was in Hawaii with Dre. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the first before, thing before that, what, what, what were your, what, what did you think about looking back at that point And now what do you, what are your feelings on relapse? Well, I don't have a problem with some of the rhymes and I don't have a problem with some of the verses as far as lyrically. Mm-hmm. It's just that the accents, like I, I, like I felt like I sounded so demented in that shit that I got cemented in that shit. Right. And then I bent it back, bitch. And then I went to scratch itch. You felt like you were, you were stuck in it and you felt like you just went way too heavy on the accent. So it kind of, it was literally like a fucking awakening and it happened in like fucking 10, five minutes, 10 minutes, listening to some of my older shit and going, I needed to feel like this again. And the first song I did out there was the one Mr. Porter did, On Fire. You're talking about off, oh, On, on Fire. fire. Yeah. Yep. So, the- so we're, we're going to move into, we're going to move into recovery. But before we do, I wanted to talk a little bit about something and clear something up. At, at the time we were creating Relapse, we were going to make it a double album. You had yeah. enough songs, you thought, to make a relapse too, Mm -hmm. right? And at some point you decided to not do that. And I think it was at the point where you said, okay, enough with this accent stuff. But what we did was we put a bunch of those songs out as relapse refill, right? Yep. Yep. And then some songs leaked out, right? So there was maybe three or four more of those from those sessions leaked out, but that was it. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because a lot of your fans think that there's some hidden relapse two album. Can you just clear that up? I mean, there's probably enough to make another relapse too. <laughs> like but when not, I go back, not and- that hasn't not that hasn't either leaked out or that was used on relapse refill. Wait, say that again, because there's not enough songs to make an album, not even close, that either weren't included on relapse refill or that had leaked out. There are. A lot of songs still that did not leak out. From Relapse. From Relapse, yep. Okay, so then your fans are demanding that you release them. Well, fuck. That's a setup. I'm just saying. I'm trying to clear it up because they think that I'm holding back some Relapse 2 project. But you're saying there's enough songs for one. Yeah, there there, there might be, but but they're terrible songs. And if they didn't even make the, the albums on Relapse... And I right. feel how I feel about relapse, then that should say something. Right. So just put it put it to bed right now. Tell your fans there's not going to be a relapse too, right? All two of them. There's no relapse too. All right. There it is.